all right uh, i have uh, disabled uac on all servers and uh, disabled the firewall and did all the configuration that we required for this demo as you can see here the computer name I named the domain controller server as cluster DC whatever the names that I have given for uh, VM uh, VM workstation uh, machine names I have given the same names uh, for the actual server names for example cluster DC in this case same as the, the VMware OS name okay similarly uh, this will be node 1 this is node 1 like that I have named node 2 for this server and let's check for this server what name I have given okay node 3 so I have named the servers appropriately for this demo uh, basically we have the cluster domain controller here on this server and we have the three nodes and let us see if we have anything to configure I have set the time zone on all servers I named them appropriately updated the Windows software on all servers up to date and uh, install the failover cluster future on all servers and added the dotnet framework so pretty much uh, we are good to go uh, we have all the requirements for clustering uh, also we need to add application role add application role on all three servers node 1 node 2 node 3 Okay, so the, re the reason why we need to add the application role is because the MSDTC service to allow the incoming and outgoing connections. If you, if you are using MSDTC for distributed transactions as part of the cluster uh, uh, service, then you have to have the uh, MSDTC service and uh, have the application role enabled on the uh, cluster nodes. Okay, when I say three nodes, that means the cluster nodes okay so let me rename this okay so I'm not sure whether I enable the application role on all servers let me check that to check that let's go to yes uh, I have enabled the application role for the distributed transactions I have enabled the incoming and outgoing so for this server it looks fine I enabled the application server uh, let's check uh, node 2 okay and for node 2 I didn't do that so let's enable application server role so these two we have to enable if you are using distributed transaction so let's install the application role on node 2 similarly on node 3 yeah it looks like I have any enabled the application role on 
node 3 but not on node 2 okay so fine uh, we have the application role enabled on all the nodes so let's make sure I have noted down on this okay we did this on on all the nodes okay it will take some time again my system is uh, very slow uh, basically I, I have installed four operating system on my laptop so it's pretty slow I will pause the video here and I will resume um, after the role is added okay the role has been added on node 2 now before we proceed with the uh, Active Directory installation on cluster DC server we may have to create a cluster uh, uh, domain account uh, as administrator okay so for that let us create a user okay so it looks like we cannot create the user here let us uh, okay so let's create a new user Okay, so I created this uh, cluster uh, admin account. Let us add this. Okay, now cluster admin account will be a domain ad, uh, admin and administrator on this box too okay so we didn't create the domain yet uh, but we are creating a user uh, before we create the domain of course we can also create active directory user later on but uh, this is just I do usually okay I created the user now before we proceed with the active directory installation uh, let us uh, Okay, we need to set up the IPs. Uh, I have listed down the IP address. So for the domain controller, these are all the IPs that we wanted to set. For the, for the domain controller, it will be 110 and subnet mask is uh, 255, 255 and 255, And I will give the, my cable modem IP address uh, as a as a default gateway so that I can connect to internet from this uh, domain controller okay and I have to provide this loopback adapter so I will give this IP address for domain controller similarly I will provide the corresponding IP addresses which are required for clustering for other nodes and I have to set up the private IP for heartbeat connection typically in uh, SQL 2012 cluster you don't need a private IP heartbeat can use the public IP just one network adapter can be used for live transactions and the heartbeat but you need to have uh, redundant network adapters you know uh, you, do, you cannot have a single point of failure for uh, heartbeat so that is why uh, we prefer to install a pri private IP address okay so first uh, let's start with domain controller let's provide this IP address to domain controller server
we have k we have given the bridge network so 110 let us uh, okay so 110 this is the ip for and my router IP address is I guess uh, 192.168.1.1 .1. let's give that So 110 and the loop back adapter. Okay, so I have given the router IP address, so that should be fine. Okay, so for cluster DC server, we are fine. Uh, for the node one and node node one two three we have set up the bridge connection but i'm not sure whether i have given the private network for these three servers let's check that no i have not given the additional uh, network adapter so let's provide that this time i'm going to use host only so host only will be used for private ips Similarly, for node 2, let's add one more network adapter for private IPs. Okay, so now let's add the network adapter to node 3 all right we added the network private network adapters for all three nodes and we have given the IP address for the network connections and similarly we have to give the IP address for for all three nodes so let's start working on that we have two network adapters here one public and uh, this is a private for the node one uh, let us open the nodes we have given one 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 Okay, before we set up the IP address for these three nodes, let's go ahead and create the domain on this machine so that we can provide this IP, this IP address as a DNS server for the three nodes. Okay, uh, so I'm going to create the domain controller on the cluster DC server. Okay, so before uh, setting up the IP address for these network connections so let us create the domain to create the domain 
click uh, add roles and features now here you have to select active domain services okay you have to select this role active directory domain services so click next alright it will take some time to install I will pass the video here and I will resume after the installation okay uh, now Promote this server to domain controller. Since we don't have any forest, let's create a new one. Meta manager dot local. Let's provide the password for uh, DSRM services and uh, this is for uh, backward compatibility if you are upgrading from 2008 R2 or from previous versions so you can upgrade from here for backward compatibility uh, since we are creating the new forest so we don't need to do anything. So it's going to keep the database files and uh, log files on C drive, which is fine. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if you click next and install, it's going to install the domain controller on this machine. Alright, it will take some time to install the domain controller. Uh, I will pass the video again here and I will resume after the installation.